because no other buildings are near it, you just zone it. So there's a lot of park and gardens around it. And then you end up with a greater level of privacy. You actually try and get people kind of away from the building before they engage in other activities. Uh, so no building is, is within sight of another. And perhaps in some rare circumstances, it'd be fine. Uh, but if we make buildings like this, you could figure um, the footprint of a 400 person town is uh, less, than, it's probably around 25 hectares. But a regularly designed town will completely uh, cement over that. They'll just cover it up and all the soil's hurting and water flow becomes a problem. Instead, if you could have just four buildings of 100 people each near each other, then you could protect nature around the building and also be much more comfortable to live. So when people say, like, you know, they don't like the idea of this kind of building because they want to get away from it all and, and go back to nature, in a way, it's actually maybe more like we used to live. We used to actually live closer together before the industrialized world enabled us not to. Uh, housing varies, of course, but clans and tribes and families for a long time, uh, you know, lived in caves and teepees and, and earth homes and, and quite close together. Now, there are some disadvantages to that, and it didn't sound good to me right away, I tell you. I, I like my privacy. I live alone in the middle of the woods, so... Um, but I think it can be done correctly, and that's one of the challenges I have here uh, is when I talk to people about this project, uh, they always want to buy two hectares or five hectares. They want to do their own thing, and I, I like that, sort of. That's what I'm doing, but I actually think it's the wrong way to do things. Uh, I think we have to uh, cluster up more uh, and, and keep the literal footprint down. Now, that brings you to another question is, is what else is around these buildings? Well, you've got really good solid uh, transportation in and out of the building. It should be very easy to, at one level, bike right up to the building, pull into a, a, a porch area designated for this and hang your bike up. Um, most of the plans should be for walking, but this should be easy because you're keeping things so much on, on the level plane. Carts would be useful. A lot of uh, carts utilizing probably bicycle wheels. Bicycles are the most efficient, uh, best form of transportation we have available, unless it's animal power, which is a whole nother topic. Um, Other things is about getting in and out of the building is, is, like I said, right near the building, you want to keep it fairly natural. The, the areas near the building would actually be owned, in, in many cases, by, by uh, building associations and or individuals. Uh, some land would be set aside and zoned as, as a rentable facility that someone can run as a business. You could have a rentable chicken coop area, for example. You could have four or five in your city, or people could just have a few hens right where they are. That would work too. I'm not sure on all that stuff. I, the, the, the basic approach I'm coming at it with is to not do the same dumb things that were done before. I suppose everyone's always thought that through time. Uh, some of the dumb things I see are, are collective ownership. Uh, this goes back to like uh, Jamestown and every single other experiment I've ever seen where people co-own something. I mean, people can't even have a, a couple work out hardly. Uh, except in rare cases. And uh, I just don't uh, see, see how community ownership can be done. But it, it also has its uh, tantalizing prospects. Um, my first thought is that trying to fight over that stuff later is difficult. So you've got to figure out what your property system is and how it's going to actually work out in a sustainable way. And nobody actually knows how to do that currently. Uh, you can't even look to indigenous wisdom in most cases, maybe in some, uh, because humans, however they expanded, uh, have managed to destroy everything around them. And uh, I mean, we killed off the mega, the mega fauna, the big animals, and we kill off the smaller ones, and we kill each other off. And uh, then we kill off the forest, and we fish out the ocean. So we haven't done real good with communal property uh, in any case. So I'm kind of interested in the idea of really thinking about what is the nature of property rights and how can a, can a group of people fully own their land and zone it uh, correctly and, and build on it correctly so that it does not destroy the actual land. Uh, one measurement of that you could imagine would be how much biomass is there around people. 
because in general biomass disappears. I mean, children will trample things, and uh, basically we just kill everything. So, so this is part of the challenge: is to figure out what human culture and, and way of building and doing things and thinking can we create here to avoid the most common uh, destructive human problems. And and I'll tell you, I don't have a path for that. I don't have an answer. I have a set of answers, and I, I, I'm occasionally open to hearing other people's answers. Um, I do know that uh, freedom is a joke. Uh, I've had uh, some people come here and they want to be free to do what they want, but the problem is in an incoherent uh, pattern of behavior, they will destroy everything. Um, so rules are necessary. Question then is, well, what rules? you got to wonder that. Uh, anybody who does come here, I, I have some rules now, and uh, my goal is to have the smallest number of rules necessary to make the place be amazing and sustainable. And if that's too many rules for people and nobody ever comes here, that's okay with me. Uh, I'm on the forest side more than I am on the visitor side. So, <sighs> rules for building are trickier than just simple social rules. Um, I have a lot of books I've looked at over the years. I haven't looked at them in a number of years now. I should probably give them another pass. But uh, one of the things I believe we can set as rules for ourselves is how we build buildings and how we eat. If we can control those two, we're doing pretty good. Uh, and we also end up more comfortable and happier. I don't know how to actually build these buildings. Uh, I'm not an architect. I have a vision in my mind. And uh, I, I gotta, I guess, work with an architect or something or write up my, my plans better. This uh, little talk here is just an experiment in trying to see if I can communicate it all. Uh, other elements to the building design uh, would be shafts, vertical shafts to let in light, vertical shafts for utilities. All toilets will be composting toilets. They will have a multi-story uh, shaft thing and, and it all just gets taken care of magically. It'd be really great. Um, Urine is all piped off onto uh, uh, gardens and used there as uh, underground uh, composting uh, drip irrigation. I've tried it, it works, it'll take care of the urine problem. Also, then you're not using up any more water on the toilets in any case. Because you're dug in to the hillside, you can use fairly simple solar hot water heaters to pump heat into a thermal mass inside the building. You can do that more or less depending on the heating uh, you require. The nice thing is that's going to be really soft heat in the thermal mass, and and uh, and it, that thing will just uh, the solar hot water thing will just run all day. Ideally, you wouldn't have to have a pump, and you could put solar hot water heater down slope from the building. The hot water would flow up into the building. Often that's difficult. We kind of want to protect the solar hot water heaters, so it's more likely that we would run a solar pump uh, connected with a solar hot water heater to pump that hot water down into the building. And down into the building, it can go into a water storage tank or whatever, you could have copper tubes. Should probably be kept pretty simple. But uh, that basically solves your heating problem. Your cooling problem is already solved because you dug into the earth. If you wanted to, you could dig in a little further and make a root cellar, although the heat of your building may eventually mess up the temperatures there. But the key is if you've got the, the, the heat of the sun and you combine that with the coolness of the earth, then you can control your temperature. And where does most electric uh, use and energy use uh, get used up? It's in heating things and cooling things. We're gonna try and get rid of all electricity use for heating and cooling, remove most needs for heating and cooling, and we're gonna do it in a bunch of imaginative, innovative ways. Uh, some of those are purely social, but some of them can be helped immensely by building things into the building itself to help out. For example, there's absolutely no reason not to have solar cooking facilities up on the roof. You could even pipe that sun down into the first floor, so it's in a protected area. Uh, I believe in uh, Oroville, they have a, a very large uh, kitchen run on a solar oven. I like the size of that. It's a little too big for me. I think it can be done smaller, but uh, Certainly impressive, and is, is examples like that, that that make you realize we can absolutely revolutionize how we live in buildings and how we live in a, a number of other ways so that we can get to live at all. Because I suspect things are getting a little bit dicey with the energy situation and lack of food. Uh, things might get, you know, a little cranky. 
So if we can uh, change our culture in, in the buildings before that happens too far, then perhaps uh, we can actually have a, a life that, that we can continue to enjoy and that our grandchildren can enjoy someday.